as a journalist, when a parent is involved in a cause and you know there's death threats against them, you do not have the right to put the kids' pictures all over the internet. Let's just show all the terrorists out there and everyone you know that's against Norma. These are Norma's children. Putting myself in her kids' shoes, I wouldn't like me, the journalist who broke up that very nice life they had. But you can't be responsible for every consequence of what you do as a journalist. The fact was that Norma was the one who lied, Norma was the one who stole, Norma was the one who deceived all of these people. And if the kids are going to hold it against anybody, they should hold it against their mother. If you're a con woman setting out to make an awful lot of money by writing a book about your false history or memoir, what you're not going to do is put yourself on public scrutiny and on chat shows and so on. You know, really clever con women would have aimed to do a book which was slightly successful rather than very successful. And I wonder here whether she was undone by the very fact that it became very successful. When I wrote the initial story, Norma Corey is a fake, I didn't know why she left America. She left because she was on the run from the FBI. The Chicago police told me, we believe she is a con woman, the best we've ever seen. She was involved in various insurance frauds over the years. Uh, we know that she uh, was tried to sue for falling down a set of stairs at her friend's place. We know that there was a case where uh, a laundromat that was in their family's name burnt to the ground and there was an insurance claim against that. She had, at various points in her adult life, conned people out of their money. Norma and John had stolen as much as a million American dollars and they shot through when the police got too close. Now when she fled in 1999, Norma just kind of fell off the face of the earth in Chicago. You know, the, the folks who were looking for her, the, the investigators, the, uh, the police, they, all those cases went cold. They had kind of given up on ever finding her again. But as soon as Norma's name started popping up again in Chicago, I started getting calls after the first story ran from folks saying, I know Norma and she scammed me too. This is a document from the Chicago police. It's a statement from a man called John Clostarides. She told him she was a Jordanian princess. I'm very wealthy in my own country, but I'm married and I want to divorce my husband and be with you, John, and be with you. But unfortunately, she can't be with John Clostarides because she has multiple real estate holdings in the United States. So she says to Clostarides, if you give me $40,000 cash, I'll be able to transfer one of those properties into our names and we'll be happy and we'll be in love and we'll be able to be together. And the poor fool hands over the money and, uh, of course, um, never seen again. In 1998, she was actually charged with hitting and scratching her mother-in-law. And when the police showed up, she threatened to kill her mother-in-law. This witness stated that Norma was the most evil person she had ever met, and she was actually afraid of her. And that's her best friend. The picture that emerged was, was really a, a woman with a, a fairly troubled past, but uh, her main goal in life was to make money. I got the sense that you could just keep digging forever and spend your lifetime trying to figure out what's true and what's not. Okay, I know that was illegal. I'm not under investigation by the FBI, but yet they can sit there and say, you know, with, with the FBI breathing down her neck or, you know, and print all these allegations without substantiating any of it. After Malcolm's article had come out saying the FBI was after me and they wanted to arrest me, I went to the main headquarters in Chicago. I walked in, I handed them my US passport, my Jordanian passport, the newspaper article, my book, my IDs, um, everything. And I said, here I am. The article says that you want to arrest me. <laughs> you know, and, and they just looked at me and said, we don't want you. I believe her husband has connections with the Chicago Greek uh, mob. And there have been times when he has uttered threats against me as he's uttered threats against Rachel. Was that absolutely seriously? Absolutely like living in the middle of a Hollywood blockbuster. I was getting phone calls in the middle of the night, getting told that Norma was being chased by the Chicago mob. And John says, just get the fuck out of there. I want you fucking out of there. I was supposed to meet John at midnight to help get some personal papers out of the house. I thought it was a load of bullshit and I was being lured down to the canal. And knowing about the mob and his connections, all we were imagining was me ending up in the bottom of the river 
in bloody concrete beds. So is the Mafia thing rubbish? Of course it is. I wish I had those friends, you know? I wish I did sometimes. <laughs> Maybe if I did, things would be different, you know? What has been said is that you're connected to Mafia in Chicago. Am I? Am I not? I don't know, am I? You know what, Malcolm is a true <laughs> You know, he's, that man is truly evil. Your enemy, you know, will obviously be <laughs> you know, and, uh, and take you down. And that's exactly what that man did. People seem to think that Norma's husband, John, was gonna come and get me. I said nothing. The only thing that I said about Malcolm is that if anything happens to my kids, I'm gonna go find that guy, you know, and I'm gonna slap him so hard, his face is gonna go on the other side. That's the only thing I said. There were three different threats over a two-week period. And as my editor said to me when I told him I was getting a little bit worried, he said, Malcolm, it's a good story, but it's not that good. The 49th Walkley Awards for Excellence in Journalism. And the winner is Malcolm Knox and Caroline Overington. Knox and Overington not only found proof of Fury's deception, but uncovered a story with implications worldwide. I think I can relate to Malcolm's ambition, really, because I'm very ambitious towards the campaign, and I think Malcolm's very ambitious about his journalistic career. You know, this was controversy, and controversy sells, and um, that's why he did it. Money. That is always what's motivated her. Forbidden Love was a windfall for her, an unearned windfall. She would have had to get more than 1.2, 1.3 million in advances. Could have been as much as two, I don't know. <laughs> more than 1.2, what? He's on drugs. No, I didn't get anywhere near a million dollars in advances. And from the money that I did get, if you actually subtract agent fees and taxes, which range from 30 to 50, and the donations that I had go directly to organizations um, before I received any of the money, I was actually lucky to pay my bills. I never came across any proof that she was giving any money to any charity. I, I find my interpretation is rather cynical. I think she decided to capitalize on other people's grief to make money for herself. Let's get this straight. I'm an evil manipulative, money-hungry, what would you even call it? Is there even a term for it? Or do I define a new breed? If I wanted just the money, why didn't I just publish and walk away? Why would I bother publishing it and running around and doing the events and putting myself out there, talking about it, wasting my time, collecting letters, answering my emails. Why am I not walking away right now? Why am I here? I can't walk away from this. It's gotten to the point where maybe it's, maybe it's wrong. I don't know. But I would walk away from my kids because I know they're strong enough, but I can't walk away from this. Norma left the kids with me only for a week to two weeks. It turned into three months because the FBI thing came up and they got people jumping and then it was better that the kids stayed while she stayed over there and sorted it out. After three months, I was virtually broke, trying to support the family by starting to sell some of the furniture. I couldn't go to work because I couldn't leave two children underage in a home on their own. And did that lead to selling your house? Yeah. At the end of the day, my main focus was those two innocent children. They went from having beautiful bedrooms each down to a suitcase, each with clothes. Mum's in America on the other side of the world, continuing to tell lies, and the father's running around doing the same thing, and no one was taking responsibility of the children. I just thought, well, I'm putting my foot down here, and I wrote to the US consulate. They thanked me very much for looking after their US citizens, and private investigator put him on the plane four days later. She owes me about 15000 It's money. That's all it is. It's just money. I, d I never felt it was Norma that was doing me over. I felt it was him. And I still believe it was him. Deep down, she... And I'll stand by it today. She's a beautiful person. She's just got a lot of... something there that none of us can answer but her. Hi, um, 